guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day, and I'm bringing you some fresh tier gameplay right off the oven. So, right off that skillet onto your plate over there where you are. Welcome to my chamber, which is my game recording room right now. I'm very excited to be back from Santiago, Chile, preparing a God Guide. Well, I guess this isn't really a God Guide. I'd call this more of a road to a God Guide because Tears of God I like a lot. Um, I've been experimenting with builds. I think Season 3... Things are yet to be discovered, you know, I think I'd be crazy to come out here and say, I've got exactly the way you should play tier right now, but I'm going to be showing you some ideas, a couple of things, if you haven't seen my le latest video called Smite Season 3, Are You Confused, uh, which is kind of a sketch comedy that me and my uh, cousin Ben Day put together, uh, but it also uh, has a, a, the point of the video is to create a comment section where people can really post all of their ideas about season three and how to build it whether it be you build tier this way whether it be I like Bakasura and doing this or whether it be the items I think are powerful etc etc basically just a, a, a message board of knowledge on that video where people can go to and get a lot of references for us all to be better at player you know playing uh, smite in this new season so I find it really useful I find it really valuable um, I'm pretty excited about how the videos done so far um, and I hope you guys check it out if you haven't seen it yet now tears of really interesting God and I've been experimenting with a couple things with him uh, one of the things I might be interested to try are these crowd reduction boots I'm not gonna do that this game what I typically have been doing lately is picking up blink on him which is one of the new relic which is one of the relics that allows me to just basically um, teleport a short distance away because when you're using that for tier it allows you to get behind people tiers crowd control is a little different it's a little unique uh, I really like it um, and it basically will take somebody uh, very far away um, in kind of this like un um, endable CC chain which you might be able to see here in a moment be very very deadly Oh, he doesn't know I'm coming. Oh, I got the four, man. Oh, God. Oh, 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 my God. And that's tier for you, baby. Oh, my God. Attack. Attack. He doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, I almost got away. Oh, my heavenly agility is still alive. Thank you. Help. Help. Oh, he's going to hit me. Oh. Okay, never mind. Woohoo! So you guys saw the power of that blink and people not knowing. That's one of the benefits of tier. Uh, you can really change a team fight. And the the real way to play tier that I would like to say for people looking at how do you play tier? What do I do? Like where do I go? You know, what's the point? First, I want to look at okay. There's a lot of physical damage on this team, and there's two strong magical damage carries. Um, and so I'm really interested about getting some physical protection for myself. And there's crowd control here, here, here a little bit. Um, hide looks like it's going to be a good item to start with. I sometimes will start with Hide of the Urchin, especially in Arena, because it's easy to get assists and all those good things there. Uh, I'm just going to walk in. I'm going to wait for Sobek. Oh, get back, baby. Get back. Where are you at, dog? Give me that. Where you at, dog? Give me that. Where you at, dog? Oh, I got him. Oh, my God. The stun was so good. The stun was so good. Oh, man. We don't got him. Holy moly. You guys, this is a game right here. And this is basically showing off how, how cool tier can be when you really, I think, play him in a way that I was just talking before. Allows you to go when people don't expect it. Tier is a god that when you see tier... You know, you walk up, you see Tyr walking up towards you like, come on, mofo, I know what you're doing. I know what you're trying to do right now. You're trying to do what you always do, which is push me into a wall and slap me up into the air. But if you don't see Tyr, it makes it such a dynamic and difficult thing. If, like, the fight initiates without you being there, and then you're able to go and catch someone who's at half health with that combo, oh, my God. God, it's it's delicious. As you can see, it's delicious, it's nutritious, it's uh, super califragilistic XP Uh Like, just waiting for this guy. I don't even have to use... Oh, well, there we go. Trying to explain things and um, not doing things correctly. That's not a good It's not a good thing. Oh, and I can't get out of uh, Odin. Oh, because he's not on my team, and I kept thought, thinking Odin was on my team. Loki's going to probably kill me here. But I have to use my teammates as help. I'm getting... Oh, no, I'm alive. feel very good about being... Gimme... That ass! Mm, mm, let's go! That's what I'm talking about. That's why you don't mess with tear. That's why you don't mess with tear. 
Oh my god, maybe this is a god guide. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. This is really, you know, I think, you know, you're finding hopefully value in learning how to play tier and, the, and kind of the value that his CC chain can do. One of the things I want to mention quickly is that the turnaround effect. Because you're CC'd for so long with tier, um, when he goes on his thing, there's a big effect. That means you could be pretty much at zero health, but because you CC them uh, and they cannot attack you and you're causing damage to them and you basically can get an extra basic attack off of that and you can switch into your dashes, uh, you actually can take someone from maybe 40% health and you being at only 10 health and kill them before they can respond to you. Not only that, you're going to be creating a target for your other teammates to really, really go after. That's going to be very, very obvious uh, for them. Now, right now, unfortunately, we've got too many minions here. So let's see. I gotta, I gotta somehow try and clear these minions. Uh, there's, there's, this. I'm in a bad spot because. Oh, really nice move by the Sobek there to dash out of the way. I, I had to do this for the minions because if we win that team fight, but all the minions go in, we lost the team fight. Yeah, it was a great opportunity for me to try and kill somebody. I guarantee that. But the problem is. Uh, we just did not have the team fight available. Uh, and now this is going to be a good spot, actually, to take the soul. And you can see, look how strong this is, right? She's basically dead uh, just from that one move. And you just see the power of that. And again, the power of being aware. In Arena, it's it's different because you have the constant pressure of the minions. So, you know, you got to be aware of these kind of things. Sometimes getting a kill is not as important as, you know, potentially losing six or seven minions into the, uh, into the portal. Because, you know, that's... That's basically a negative two trade for you. A lot of people don't realize that. But it's important. If you don't see someone paying attention to that, um, you know, you you do it. You do it because you'll help your team uh, much, much more effectively. Now, this Odin doesn't have a lot of mana. One of the things that you can really will help your play, I think, is noticing how, how, how is pe how's people's mana. Like, what's their, what's their escape ability here? Oh, wow. I almost had him. Let's get this Sobek out of here. There you go. You see the, 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 the combo with the dashes, the double dash there happening. Um, looks like the Sobek is almost dead. The Zeus is chasing really a lot, um, and that, that just may be too much. We've got too many people going on here. Uh, the Soul um, basically takes me out there. The Ulr's going going back. I don't know what I have to do here. I, there's not much I can do. The Ulr's got a nice sprint. The Bakasur is going on him, though. This could be something special. This could be something special. Oh, no. It's not. It's not something special. I don't have enough mana to make anything special. I've got to just get out of here. Okay, let's get out. That's fine. Something special happened already. We're down. We're down still, which is not sexy. But you know what? We're okay because we're trying out this brand new build that I wanted to show you guys. Now, I'm leaving the fountains without a relic, but that's okay because I want to get these minions. And uh, let's continue talking about my baby. My baby tier. Now, I've had a lot of requests to show some tier gameplay and the tier build, so this is kind of why I'm focusing on tier lately. Um, because, you know what, this is a good build. Now, one of the things I'm interested in is trying some of these relics. Um, Sprint seems like it could be interesting. Have reached your huh. Why don't we do... Why don't we do... Uh... Why don't we try? Why don't we try sprint? Let's try that. I haven't tried sprint before. Uh, we're gonna be picking up now, actually, the uh, spirit robe, which is gonna be providing us with a couple things. I'll go over the build in a second, guys, so you guys kind of understand what's happening. Again, look at how our minions are not being. I'm actually gonna send something to my teammates. Hey guys, just remember to focus minions. I feel I am watching them a lot so let's all do it as a team effort okay okay so here we go so just letting people know sometimes you don't have to be mean about it you just let people know hey i feel like i'm taking care of all the minions uh why don't we do that um together and we can probably be a little bit more effective here now uh we have been pushed out of this game so that we're actually doing well we're, we're pretty tied we're winning in gold um but we're losing, and that's because of the minion push. And that's one of the things you just want to be really careful about in this uh, in this situation. Now, the soul probably... Oh, it doesn't look like she activated her incorporeal yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. That was not sexy. That was not my favorite. All right, let's use sprint here. Uh-oh. That was not what I wanted. Let's go, Bakasura. Let's go. Oh, he used his ult. That's okay. I'm coming. I'm coming around. This is about to be. Pound down. 
Pound Town. You don't want. Oh my God! So many actives. What is this? This is this is like, this is Relic World. This is just literally where the the place where the only thing that we have is our relics. That's it. You just you hit relics over and over again. And you enjoy the experience of constantly being buffed for speed and slowed for speed. It's really dynamic. It's we're trying to beat Disney World, but we're we're not quite there yet. We're really we have some some things we haven't figured out. So, anyways, uh, Relic World seems to be the case here. Everyone buying a lot of team activisms, uh, the weakening curse, uh, the sprint. You know, it's it's something that is interesting, an interesting dynamic. I have to say, I actually enjoy it. But I, but I do have to say that it's creating uh, an interesting, you know, an interesting dynamic to, to really be a part of. Now, I don't have a ton of mana. I don't have a ton of stuff to be able to do here. I could help uh, this guy if he really needs it. But he's got his active. He looks... Oh, wow. Whoa. And that's what you call a team play. Even though he got taken out, that is what you call a team play. The Odin ult comes out. That's true. That's true. Wow, they're going ham here. They're going ham. I need to get back out of here. I need to get back out. Help me out, baby. Give me that. Let me get out here. Come on now. Oh, and the minions. It's just unfortunate, guys. It's it's super unfortunate right now. We do not have as tanky of a team as they do have. Um, but, but that does not mean we're not able to win this game, guys. You cannot just give up quickly. You cannot go away without a fight. Hmm. Wish I would have been able to do that. Soul goes incorporeal. Not enough. Now, let's see how we're doing here. One and eight. We got a Hebo that's one and eight. That's probably one of our biggest issues there. And he didn't pick up Sanctuary. So he's not going to be able. I don't know. The blink on Hebo seems like a little odd. I guess it's maybe to surprise kill somebody with his ultimate. But uh, no, it seems a little little bit of a strange a little bit of a strange thing. They've just got a lot of aggression. And I'm going on the Soul here to force her incorporeal out as soon as possible. There we go. That's out. So now in this team fight, she's not really going to have it. Oh, we'll get the slow there onto the onto the uh, my homie, my homie Odin. Now they're pretty they're pretty down. Although the Uller went and did his own thing here. Let's go! Come on, turn it around. No, this is the target, baby. This is the target. Come on, Hebo. Whoa! Wow! So that's an oper that's an that's an example of really not being able to pick targets because we had that Uller really ready to go here. Uh, um, I activated sprint for my team. Give me that, give me that, give me that. There we go, got the Loki. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, God. Oh, God. Jeez, that is just so, you know, we're... <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to dis discuss some of the frustration here. And this is, guys, this is, this is some of the scenarios you probably will come across in your daily experience in Smite. I'm 4-0, but our team is losing poorly and we're not getting minions and I we've talked about it and I've, I've stressed it so how do you do this how do you deal with scenarios like this what do you what do you do what's your go-to move you know what I mean how do you how do you handle this well it's definitely not blaming your teammates because if I really wanted to I could be paying more attention to minions I'm just saying hey why don't you guys do it and I hope they do it and I kind of stopped thinking about it but we actually ended up losing that much more uh, as a result I'm gonna take this damage buff because I like this damage buff oh really Y'all all went over here, huh? Oh, no. Are you serious? Are you serious, baby? All right, all right. You're able to get out there. Let's see what's up. Give me... Oh, okay. Use his beats. Great. Great, 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 great. Great. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, we might be able to get this Odin. Okay. Okay. Let's oh, let's keep track here. That's a dead Loki if I ever saw one, unless he's got his ult. Unless he's got his ult, which he clearly didn't. Now I want to pay attention to minions. Why? Because I said I do. I'm gonna ult these minions. Damn it! Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Oh, sometimes, sometimes, man. You know, sometimes I just want to slap minions till they're dead. Minions, man. Why are you? Why are you being so OP? Minions OP in season three, apparently. Apparently, guys. Man. Well, you know, sometimes. Listen, the, the best thing I could I could advise you all, if you're feel, experiencing frustration, is not to look at what what you, what other people can do for you. What can you do for other people? I know it sounds a lot like that stupid quote about not what you can do for your country, but what can your country do for you. But the truth is, in my opinion, in my opinion, 
that when you basically go to the mentality of blaming other people for scenarios that are happening in your experience, uh, there's two options. You blame other people, you lose energy, you, you give up, you don't feel very confident, or you say, you know, what can I do about it? You start really thinking analytically about the situation, and that's kind of like been my goal. My teammates are not connected to me right now, so that's fine. I'm heading back around. Let's see, I bet their Oler's doing pretty well. Six and two, seven and four. Their ADCs are doing strong. And the other thing I'd say is, you know, talking from the beginning, you know, I knew this was not, this is, this is a lot of people wanting to, uh, play, you know, their favorite characters. It wasn't, it wasn't like, let's pick a team comp that really works. Um, okay. Let's go, let's go. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Good, good. We're getting a little something here. Wow. There we go. Come on, baby. Come on, Neath. Root. Root, baby. Oh. Unfortunate there. And, you know, you, you get the surrenders coming out, right? You get the surrenders coming out. That's just a part of life. But, you know, we're not surrendering over here, guys. I apologize. You, you, must, you must know me. You must not know me. That's what it is. Because if you knew me, you knew I would not even be considering this surrender at all. Um, Sobek looking for the pick. They've got a lot of CC. And as you can see, guys, CC being very strong in Season 3. I missed that on the Loki, and that's unfortunate because I would have killed him. I would have I would have done a great job of killing him, missing all that. Uh, really, actually, one of the more interesting parts of, of Season 3 is I've actually only played Warriors um, so far. Oh, yeah, we got this. We got this. Give me that ass. Come on. I can't believe I'm about to go undefeated up in this. Oh my gosh, this is next level. 5-0. I can't I can't tell whether this is a good game or a bad game. You guys don't usually see losses, but I feel like I'm showing some good tier gameplay. We're talking about good, valuable things. So, you know, I, I do want to kind of keep showing this game because, you know, for me, this is this is part of learning. This is part of it. Now, Rune 4, let's talk about the build a little bit. Let's see what's happening. I got the Hide of the Urchin, which is giving me magical protection, health, and mana. Now, I get three magical protections and three physical protections per stack instead of two, which was last season. So they basically buffed, they debuffed uh, a little bit of the natural protections you get, and you gain more per stack. I don't know if it's a net positive for Hide of the Urchin, or if it's a net, you know, negative or whatever. I actually have no idea what the what the scenario is. Let's wait till our teammates are, are ready to go. Um, the, the thing is, we don't have enough CC peel. There we go. And we don't have enough clear uh, naturally. Uh, we could, but the Zeus and all them just ain't, ain't working it. They just ain't working it. Um, now the one character... Now they're doing... A, now see, this is what we don't want. That box is where we're getting. Okay, so beads are down. That's fine. Beads are down. They got a quick kill. They got a quick kill. Olo's going after me. I could very well get killed here. Hot sprint. I feel like Loki was coming after me. Um, now, the Hide of the Urchin is a great item. It's going to basically make you very, very tanky. Um, and in, the, in my role, I needed to be tanky, I, I, and possibly my playstyle, I needed to be a little bit more upfront, initiating some of these things. Uh, you can see here, um, they're they're really like focusing on me, and my team is very spread out. As is, as a as a Zeus and a Hebo over there, like that was not where they needed to be to support this game or anything positive happening. As you can see here, uh, they were just so far away. And it, it's, it makes it difficult if you're the main damage source, and I, I'm not going to be able to do damage. That's why a lot of people, when they play support, can feel very on their own. They can feel very isolated. It can be a frustrating experience, as you guys saw here, with a 5-0 and 15 tier game. Uh, but pretty much the only other player on my reigns plan going 9-3 and with the Zeus. And the Hebo, the Bakasura, the Neath, not doing too hot. But one of the interesting things is people can often feel... Um, it, it, they can feel very isolated playing a support and I want you guys to know that that's part of this process um, when you don't play with a clan when you don't play with a full clan or you just play with a couple like maybe one member and you do a solo queue it could be very tough it could be very difficult I often can feel very um, uninspired that tier was so annoying tier was a hacker <laughs> good job guys oh that's funny uh, and, and um, 
I got to say, you can see how strong Tyr can be, even in this scenario. Um, I think he's a very strong god in Season 3. I think he brings a lot of CC, and when you build this way, you get a lot of crowd control reduction um, with just this one item here, which is 20%, which means Tyr, because of the fact that he has a 30% crowd control reduction on his, on his uh, passive, you actually get... 50% crowd control reduction uh, in the entire game. And I'm sorry, I apologize for not going through his abilities during this game, um, but hopefully you guys got to see exactly how they work. There's not a lot of secret um, stuff to it. You saw what it was. His ultimate, he leaps and slams, causing damage. His number one is basically it dashes through people, slows them a little bit. His number two heals him up. Uh, on his blue stance, it heals him up uh, based on up to three people uh, that he hits, I believe. Or maybe it's every person that he hits. They might have changed that. But it's basically a heal, uh, and you want to hit as many people as possible with that one. It's an extra piece of damage as well. Uh, his three changes stances, and his number one on his red side is that big CC chain, which basically takes someone into a direction, and then your number two right after... They will hit them. If you use it right after, it will basically hit them up and knock them back a little bit farther away. Um, you can see here the build using Blink, then using Sprint, uh, helping to also make you immune. One of the things that this build does well is it makes Tyr very tanky. Um, and again, you can see he still causes good damage to some of the... Uh, you know, characters that like Uller and Soul and Loki who don't have a lot of health, don't have a lot of protections, he could still do quite a lot of base damage to them and, of course, put the team in a very, very bad situation. So, ideally, um, building tier with a little bit more uh, defense to stay alive because he's going to be very up close to people with items like Spirit Robe that allows you to have crowd control reduction. Um, you basically have damage mitigation. 50 by 15% whenever you're hit with a crowd control effect, and that will happen a lot. And the cooldown's relatively short, 10 seconds. That's pretty short cooldown for, um, I think, kind of a really good passive. So, uh, Spirit Robe, I think, is really strong this season. I think it's a good item, uh, especially on tier. Mantle of Discord is a great item on tier as well. This is a brand new item, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this because you get the cooldown reduction, which is great for tier, being able to use his abilities. Um, the other thing you do is you get... 30% when you go below 30% health you basically release the shockwave that stuns people and uh, What that means is you also gain CC immunity as well So it's it's a teeter-totter you're being pursued and not only do you stun people you gain CC immunity So you become harder to catch and they basically have to stop for one second So it's a really strong thing um, If you take damage below 30% your health of your health It's a very expensive item, but you can see the stats are really strong and I like to build it on him uh, At some point in the game probably a later slot one of the items you can build that will give you a little bit more damage early on That I think works nicely with tier is this runeforged hammer. It's giving him health. It's giving him power Excuse me. Damn. I just burped. It's giving him health. It's giving him power, but it also gives him this interesting passive that basically if you have a character who is slowed or rooted, uh, you deal 30% of your physical power to them in your next ability. So the more physical power you have, you're adding an extra 30% of that, of that physical power as to added damage on your abilities when you're hitting a player that is slowed or already rooted. Now, if you're not hitting a player that's slowed or rooted, you do 15% of your uh, physical power onto your abilities. Um, and these are your abilities. This is not your ability. So it's not like a Hydra's where you do it on your next basic attack or your next ability. Um, it's basically these are adding 15% of your physical power to as magical damage uh, against your enemies uh, and up to 30%. This last item here was an interesting item. I sometimes like to pick on tier when I'm going more offensive. I've been experimenting with it. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm not exactly it's oh this uh, this item stone cutting sword. You get 50 physical power. Um, but you get 10% movement speed, and your passive, you get melee basic attacks, decreasing enemy physical protections by 10, and increasing your physical protections by 10. Uh, people that I immediately see this item being amazing on are people like Nemesis. Uh, for Tyr, I see it being potentially good, uh, because movement speed is great for him, and being able to catch up to people, and just outrun them, and uh, use uh, you know his number one to put them back in a bad situation. Uh, a lot of Tyr's uh, play style is based on positioning, so items like that give you movement speed, but also give you this a little bit of a tankier passive, allow you to, I think, offset some of the um, lack of physical protections or lack of more of the health, maybe more of a tankier item that you would normally pick on tier. Another item that would be really good on him, in my opinion, is Shifter Shield, which received a little bit of a buff and allows him to do more damage while he's above uh, the 50% health threshold and then take less damage uh, by increasing his protections when he passes below the 50% threshold. 
uh, health threshold. So all good ideas. These are my thoughts on tier. I'll be doing a road to tier God guide. Obviously, um, with this video starting the first one, I'll be pursuing the next nemesis God guide as well as I've been doing a road to that. And I feel like she's gotten buffed in a really nice way. So look out for those videos. And of course, more good things coming from Rain Day Gaming in the near future. Hopefully you guys checked out the last couple of videos and check out that season three smite. Are you confused video that I just put out? If you want some tips and tricks from people in the Rain Day Gaming community to help you guys out and to kind of figure out how to go ahead and uh, build some of these characters or tackle some of these Season 3 difficulties or challenges you may be experiencing now. Here are my damage stats if you guys wanted to see them. Uh, nothing crazy impressive, but you got to say that the damage mitigated was very strong in this game, um, and that was a, a big a big goal for me um, being kind of my only peel in this game. People say you need, people say you need more... Mages, mages are OP, fine, but you still need CC, you still need tanks, this is, I think, still a CC tank meta, I do not think this is all of a sudden a mage meta, I, I do not believe that teams without enough peel, CC, and, and tanky characters are going to be able to beat, uh, are going to, are going to lose to a bunch of mages, I don't believe that yet, I haven't seen anything to offer contradictory evidence, I played this game not changing this, because I wanted to see, okay, will this kind of, uh, mage, hunter, assassin, you know, a lot of these characters are supposed to be good right now, Bakasura got a buff, will it work, I'm still in the, in the mind frame that it's a CC tank meta, now, mages got better, Maybe some mages are going to be, maybe you can have, maybe you can have mages filling some more slots. Maybe you're going to see more souls uh, in that ADC role rather than a traditional hunter. I don't know. I'm, I'm, these are just things I'm throwing out. I, I may, it may not happen, but I think you still need to prioritize CC and tankiness uh, and characters. If you're playing without a guardian and just one warrior and everyone else is a squishy, I don't think you're going to do too well. I don't think you're going to do too hot on average. But that's my opinion, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe uh, for more content like this here at Rain Day Gaming and to stay tuned with me. Also, follow me on Google Plus if you want to stay tuned to a new uh, thing I'm going to be putting out uh, for Google Plus. It'll be a specific giveaway just for people who are following me there. And I also will be streaming tonight at twitch.tv slash rainday if you guys want to come on to that and hang with me live. I'll be playing some more games, going over season three and my thoughts, and uh, doing a lot of fun stuff on stream as well. Talking about my adventures in Chile, all that good stuff. So stay tuned if you guys want to watch that. Thanks so much for watching. As always, my name is Rainday. Never give up, never stop gaming, and I'll see you guys next time.